Number 22. The label on a portable radio recommends the use of rechargeable nickel-cadmium cells, NICADs, although they have a 1.25-volt EMF, while alkaline cells have 1.58-volt EMF. The radio has a 3.2-ohm resistance. Letter A. Draw the circuit diagram of the radio and its batteries. Um, so I'm assuming that the this thing has only one battery in it. So uh, here's the battery, here's the resistance, and they are connected in series to one another. Um, this will represent either the NICAD or the alkaline cell, and uh, this represents the uh, resistance of the radio. So what we can do is we can label this uh, 3.20 uh, ohms. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically that. And then it says back in the question, now calculate the power delivered to the radio for letter B. Uh, when using NICAD cells, each having an internal resistance of 0 0.04 ohms. All right, it says each having an internal resistance. Honestly, I don't know how many batteries there. Maybe there's two. Maybe there's three. Maybe there's 15. I have no clue, but this is now making it sound like it has more than one. But who knows? I don't. Anyway, the assumption is one. So if you had to do more, you're just going to add them all together. No big deal. Uh, now what we're going to do is uh, we know the internal resistance now of this battery. It's going to be, I'll call this little r, all right, is going to be uh, 0.04 ohms. And we also know the voltage. The NICAD has a voltage of, or the EMF, right? Not the terminal voltage, but the EMF of um, 1.25, all right, volts. So now remember current, right? basically flows from the positive to the negative terminal, so you know current is going around this way. Uh, not that that really matters in this problem. Um, but in order to figure out the power dissipated or, or given to, or however you want to think about it, by the radio, we have to figure out either the voltage over the radio or we have to figure out the current flowing through the radio. You know, one of those two. Uh, we know the resistance already. All right, so what we can do is I can say that the power delivered to the radio will equal the current flowing through the radio squared multiplied by then the resistance of the radio. Notice how consistent that is, okay? So what I need to do is I need to know the resistance of the radio. Ah, well, that's simple, right? I mean, that's they gave that to us, so that part we don't have to worry about. But now what about the current flowing through the radio? So we have to consider this, that the total current here flowing in the circuit is a function of not only the resistance of the radio, but it is also a function of the internal resistance inside the battery, right? It has to also overcome that resistance too. So in order to figure this out, what we can do is we can, uh, we can approach this in a few ways, right? Uh, I think the easiest way might be to use Ohm's law, all right? That the current, the total current flowing through the whole circuit is gonna equal the total voltage supplied to the whole circuit whole thing, including the battery, okay? Divided then by the whole or the total resistance inside this entire circuit. So keep this in mind. Let me ask this question. What is the total voltage of this entire circuit? It's 1.25 volts, it's the EMF. You might say, well, wait, 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 wait. I thought it was the terminal voltage. It depends on what I'm saying. If I'm asking what's the voltage supplied to the radio, Okay, it's going to be not, it's not going to be 1.25 volts, all right? But if I'm asking what's the total voltage supplied to the entire circuit, it will be the EMF of the battery. That's like the maximum power, excuse me, that's the maximum voltage supplied. It will not be delivered to this radio because it also has to overcome an internal resistance. So the total voltage here of the entire circuit is really the EMF, which is 1.25 volts. Now, what's the total resistance then of the circuit? The whole thing, everything. This resistance, including the internal. Well, how do we figure it out? You might say, just add them. And I would say, yeah, I agree. Just add them. Why? Because they're connected in series to one another. Right? In order, in order for the current to flow right through that resistor, it basically has to go back through the battery. Right? And it keeps flowing around in the circle. All right? So... Uh, those two resistances are in series, and you know how to find the total resistance in series as you simply add them up, according to the formula up there on the top right. So 3.20 plus then 0 0.04. So now I can find the total current, right? So let's do it. 1.25 uh, 
um, divided then by 3.2 plus 0 0.04. So the total current here is about 0 0.386. Okay, now you might say, all right, Andrew, you found the total current, that's in amps, but now what's the current supplied to the just the radio? Well, it turns out it's the same thing. Consider that in series, when elements are in series, the current is constant. Current is constant. Okay, remember, we came up with this IS. Current, constant in series. And then we said VP. Voltage, constant in parallel. Okay, so you can remember that little, little thing. I don't know if that helps. But that's how I remember it. So the current flowing through the battery and the current flowing through that radio is the same. They're equal. So that's why I knew that if I found the total current, well, I know the total current is equal to the current flowing through this resistor and the current flowing through that internal resistance. So uh, we know it now. Now, what do we do? We just simply take this and we go, boop, plug it in. Plug it in up there. Okay. We plug it in. Square it times it by the radio's resistance, not the total, because we're finding the power delivered to the radio, and voila, square, and then multiply by 3.2, and we get an answer here of 0 0.476, all right, watts, and that's that. Now, the same process we're going to do for uh, letter C, it seems, right, when using alkaline cells, uh, each having an internal resistance of blah. Okay, so ready? We're going to run through this one. So this was B, this is going to be C. I'm going to use the same formula. Power delivered to the radio will be equal to the current flowing through the radio squared multiplied by the resistance of the radio. We know that we use now Ohm's law to figure out that current. So remember, Ohm's law is just simply voltage divided by resistance. So we need the total voltage divided by the total resistance because we knew that if we found the total current, it's the same thing as the current flowing through the radio because current is constant in series, multiplied then by the resistance of the radio. And here we go. So it's going to now, the battery is supplying a total EMF of 1.58 now volts over the total volt, uh, the total uh, resistance, which is the resistance of that radio 3.2, uh, plus then the internal of uh, 0 0.2 this time. All right, and then square that bad boy and then multiply it by uh, the resistance of that radio 3.2. All right, let's see what we get. So 1.58 divided by parenthesis 3.2 plus 0.2. Get that value, square it, and then multiply it by 3.2. So you get a wattage now of, uh, what do we get? 0 0.691, and that's in watts. Okay, that takes care of letter C. And then letter D, does this difference seem significant considering that the radio's effective resistance is lowered uh, when its volume is turned up? Well, it depends on how high the radio's um, uh, resistance, it depends on how low, excuse me, the radio's resistance can get when the volume is turned up. Depends on the relationship. Uh, you know, as the the resistance will approach zero, basically. Um, so I don't, I don't think it matters, but who knows? Guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope that helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe if you can. We really do appreciate it. And I'll see you soon. Take care.